You think I married you for love? Don't kid yourself, Evelyn. You're just a stepping stone. The words hung in the air, sharp and cold. I stood there, frozen, my hand still gripping the spatula I'd been using to make breakfast. Grayson's eyes, once warm and inviting, now gleamed with a cruel satisfaction. What? I managed to choke out. He laughed, a sound that used to make my heart flutter, but now sent chills down my spine. Oh, come on. You can't be that naive. Did you really think someone like me would settle for someone like you without an agenda? My name is Evelyn, and this is the moment my fairy tale shattered. I set the spatula down, my movements slow and deliberate. Someone like you? And what exactly is that supposed to mean? Grayson leaned against the kitchen counter, his perfectly pressed suit a stark contrast to my flower-dusted apron. Ambitious. Destined for greatness. Your family's little construction business was just the first rung on the ladder. The room seemed to tilt. I gripped the edge of the stove, steadying myself. Our marriage. It was all a lie. Not all of it, he said, his tone almost bored. The sex was good. And you did make a convincing trophy wife at company events. Rage bubbled up inside me, hot and sudden. I grabbed the nearest object, a ceramic mug, and hurled it at his head. He ducked, and it shattered against the wall behind him. Get out. I screamed. Get the hell out of my house. Grayson's eyes widened, a flicker of genuine surprise crossing his face. Your house? I think you're forgetting who pays the bills around here, sweetheart. I advanced on him, my voice low and dangerous. My family's company built this house. My sweat and blood are in these walls. Now get out before I show you exactly what a construction worker's daughter is capable of. He held up his hands in mock surrender, that infuriating smirk still playing on his lips. All right, all right, I'm going. But this isn't over, Evelyn. You do well to remember that. The front door slammed, and I collapsed onto the kitchen floor, my mind reeling. How had I been so blind? The whirlwind romance, the lavish proposal, the dream wedding, it had all seemed too good to be true. Because it was. I don't know how long I sat there, surrounded by shards of broken ceramic and the ruins of my marriage. Eventually, I pulled myself up and reached for my phone. With shaking fingers, I dialed the one person I knew I could always count on. Mom, my voice cracked. I need you. An hour later, I was sitting in my parents' cozy living room, a mug of tea warming my hands. My mother, Rose, sat beside me, her arm around my shoulders. My father, Oliver, paced by the fireplace, his face a storm of concern and anger. I'll kill him, Oliver growled. I'll tear that smug bastard limb from limb. Dad, please, I said wearily. Violence isn't the answer. Rose squeezed my shoulder. Your father's just upset, honey. We both are. To think that Grayson could be so, so, manipulative, deceitful, a complete and utter asshole. I supplied. Despite everything, a small smile tugged at my mother's lips. I was going to say misguided but your words work too. Oliver stopped pacing and sat down across from us. Evelyn, sweetheart, I know you're hurting, but we need to think practically. What did he mean about using our business? I shook my head. I don't know. He always acted like the company was beneath him, said it was just a quaint family business that would never amount to much. Rose and Oliver exchanged a look. Honey, my mother said gently, there's something we need to tell you about the company. For the next hour, my parents laid out the truth about Montgomery Construction. It wasn't just a small family business, it was a rapidly growing enterprise with contracts all over the state. They had been protecting me, they said, wanting me to have a normal life without the pressure of a family legacy. But why didn't you tell me? I asked, feeling betrayed, all over again. Oliver leaned forward, his eyes intense. We were going to, sweetheart. We had a whole plan to bring you into the fold gradually. But then you met Grayson, and everything happened so fast. We thought we had time, Rose added softly. We never imagined he would. Use me as a pawn in a sick game? I finished bitterly. The room fell silent. I stared into my now cold tea, my mind racing. 
Grayson had seen the potential in my family's company when I couldn't. He had played me, played all of us, for his own gain. Suddenly, I stood up a new fire burning in my chest. I want in, I declared. I want to learn everything about the business. And then, I paused, my voice hardening. Then I'm going to use every resource at my disposal to make Grayson rue the day he ever thought he could use me as a stepping stone. My parents exchanged another look, this one filled with a mixture of pride and concern. Evelyn, my father said slowly, revenge isn't the answer. It won't heal your heart. I met his gaze, my jaw set. Maybe not, but it'll be a damn good start. I woke up the next morning on my parents' couch, my head pounding and eyes puffy from a night of tears and rage. The smell of coffee wafted from the kitchen, and I stumbled in to find my mother already dressed for work. Morning, sweetheart, Rose said, sliding a mug across the counter. How are you feeling? Like I've been hit by a truck, I mumbled, taking a grateful sip. Is dad at the office already? She nodded. He wanted to get an early start. We have a lot to catch you up on. The events of yesterday came flooding back. Grayson's betrayal, the revelation about our family business. I set the mug down with a clatter. Mom, I meant what I said last night. I want in. I need to know everything. Rose's eyes softened. I know, honey, and we're going to tell you. But first, we need to deal with the more immediate problem. Grayson, I spat. Exactly. Have you checked your phone? I realized I'd left it off since yesterday. Turning it on, I was bombarded with notifications, missed calls, texts, voicemails. All from Grayson. He's trying to backpaddle, I said, scrolling through the messages. Baby, I'm sorry. We need to talk. It wasn't what you think. Typical. Rose's face hardened. Don't fall for it, Evelyn. Men like that, they'll say anything to keep their hooks in you. I deleted the messages without responding. Don't worry. I'm done with his lies. We finished our coffee and headed to Montgomery Construction's main office. I'd been here before, of course, but always as a visitor. Now, as we walked through the bustling corridors, I saw it with new eyes. Dad was waiting in the conference room, along with a man I didn't recognize. Evelyn, this is Jack Reeves, our head of legal. Oliver introduced us. He's here to help us navigate the situation. I shook Jack's hand, noting his firm grip and kind eyes. Nice to meet you, Evelyn, he said. I'm sorry it's under these circumstances. We all sat down, and for the next two hours, my parents and Jack laid out the full scope of Montgomery Construction. I learned about our major projects, our financial standings, and the complex web of contracts and partnerships that made up our business empire. So, I said, my head spinning, we're not just some quaint family business. We're a major player in the industry. Oliver nodded. We've worked hard to build this company, Evelyn, and we've always planned for you to take over someday. We just, we wanted to protect you from the pressure. I felt a pang of frustration. I appreciate that, Dad, but I'm not a child. I could have handled it. You're right, Rose said softly. We should have trusted you more. But now, we need to focus on protecting you and the company from Grayson. Jack cleared his throat. Mrs. Hartman, I've reviewed your prenuptial agreement. The good news is it's ironclad. Grayson has no claim on your personal assets or your shares in the company. I let out a breath. I didn't know I'd been holding. Thank God for small mercies. However, Jack continued, there is the matter of your joint accounts and the house. We'll need to move quickly to secure those assets before Grayson can access them. My father leaned forward. Evelyn, we can handle all of this for you. You don't have to. No. I cut him off. I need to do this myself. I got myself into this mess, and I'm going to get myself out. Rose reached over and squeezed my hand. You're not alone, sweetheart. We're here for whatever you need. I squeezed back, grateful for their support. Thank you. All of you. Now, where do we start? Jack pulled out a folder. First things first, we need to freeze your joint accounts. Then we'll start the process of dividing assets. It won't be easy, Evelyn. Grayson's likely to fight this every step of the way. Let him, I said a steely resolve settling over me. 
I'm done being his stepping stone. It's time he learned what happens when you mess with a Montgomery. We spent the rest of the day strategizing. By the time we finished, I had a clear plan of action. I would move back home temporarily, freeze our accounts, and file for divorce. It wasn't going to be pretty, but I was ready for the fight. As we were wrapping up, my phone buzzed. A text from Grayson. We need to talk. I'm coming over tonight. I showed it to my parents. He doesn't know I'm not at the house, I said. Oliver's face darkened. I'll go over there, and... No, Dad. I interrupted. I need to face him myself. It's time I stood up to him once and for all. Rose looked worried. Are you sure, honey? You don't have to do this alone. I stood up, feeling stronger than I had in months. I'm sure. Grayson thinks he can manipulate me, use me for his own gain. It's time he learned just how wrong he is. As I left the office, I felt a mix of fear and determination. The old Evelyn might have crumbled in the face of Grayson's charm and lies, but that Evelyn was gone. In her place stood a woman ready to reclaim her life, her dignity, and her future. Grayson Hartman was about to learn that he'd made the biggest mistake of his life. I stood in the kitchen of my soon-to-be former home, my hands gripping the counter as I waited for Grayson to arrive. The house felt different now, tainted by the knowledge of his betrayal. Every happy memory we'd shared here now seemed like a cruel joke. The doorbell rang, and I took a deep breath, stealing myself. I opened the door to find Grayson standing there, his usual polished appearance slightly disheveled. For a moment, I saw a flicker of the man I thought I'd married. Evelyn, he said, his voice soft. Thank God. I've been trying to reach you. I stepped aside, letting him in without a word. He moved past me, his expensive cologne filling the air. Look, Grayson started, running a hand through his hair. What I said yesterday, I didn't mean it. I was angry, frustrated. You know how I get when work is stressful. I cross my arms, my voice steady. And what about Maya? Was she just stress relief too? His eyes widened for a fraction of a second before he composed himself. Maya? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't lie to me, Grayson. Not anymore. Before he could respond, the doorbell rang again. Confusion crossed Grayson's face as I moved to answer it. Standing on the porch was Lydia Hartman, her perfectly coiffed hair and designer outfit a stark contrast to the tension in the air. Mother? Grayson said, surprise evident in his voice. What are you doing here? Lydia swept into the house, her eyes darting between us. I came to see how you two were doing. I've been so worried. I bit back a bitter laugh. Worried about her son's plan falling apart, more like. Evelyn, dear, Lydia said, her voice dripping with false concern. Grayson told me about your disagreement. I'm sure it's all just a misunderstanding. I met her gaze, refusing to be cowed. There's no misunderstanding, Lydia. Your son made his intentions quite clear. Lydia's eyes narrowed. Now, let's not be hasty. Every marriage has its rough patches. I'm sure if you just tried a little harder. That's enough, mother, Grayson interrupted, looking uncomfortable. I felt a surge of anger. Tried harder? I gave everything to this marriage. I supported Grayson's career, played the perfect wife at his work events, put my own dreams on hold. And for what? To be used as a stepping stone? Lydia's mask of concern slipped for a moment, revealing a flash of contempt. Well, dear, you can hardly blame Grayson for wanting more. After all, you're not exactly from our circle. The room fell silent. Grayson looked mortified, but I noticed he didn't jump to my defense. I took a deep breath, channeling all the strength I'd found in the past two days. You're right, Lydia. I'm not from your circle. I come from a family that values hard work, honesty, and loyalty, the qualities that seem to be in short supply in the Hartman household. Lydia gasped, affronted. How dare you? No. I cut her off. How dare you come into my home and try to manipulate me? I see through you both now. Grayson married me for my family's company, and you went along with it because you thought you could control me. Grayson stepped forward, his charm offensive in full swing. Evelyn, baby, that's not true. I love you. We can work this out. 
I laughed, the sound harsh even to my own ears. Save it, Grayson. I'm done with your lies. I've already frozen our joint accounts and contacted a lawyer. This marriage is over. The color drained from Grayson's face. You what? You can't do that. I can, and I have, I said, my voice steady. You underestimated me, Grayson. You thought I was just some naive girl you could use and discard. But I'm a Montgomery, and we don't break that easily. Lydia's face contorted with rage. You ungrateful little. I think it's time for you both to leave. I interrupted, moving towards the door. Grayson grabbed my arm. Evelyn, please. We can talk about this. I wrenched my arm free. There's nothing left to say. Get out of my house. Both of you. For a moment, I thought Grayson might argue further. But something in my expression must have convinced him of my resolve. He nodded stiffly and turned to his mother. Come on, mother. We're leaving. Lydia looked like she wanted to say more, but Grayson practically dragged her out the door. As they reached the porch, Lydia turned back, her eyes cold. This isn't over, Evelyn. You have no idea who you're dealing with. I met her gaze unflinchingly. Neither do you, Lydia. Neither do you. I closed the door and leaned against it, my heart pounding. The house felt emptier now, but also lighter, as if a great weight had been lifted. I pulled out my phone and dialed my mother's number. Mom, it's done. They're gone. Rose's voice was warm and supportive. I'm proud of you, sweetheart. Are you okay? I took a deep breath, surveying the house that had once been my dream home. I will be. I think. I think it's time for a fresh start. As I hung up, I felt a sense of possibility wash over me. Grayson and his family had tried to break me, to mold me into their perfect, compliant wife. But they had failed. I was stronger than they knew, and I was ready to reclaim my life on my own terms. The war might not be over, but I had won this battle. And I was just getting started. The next morning, I woke with a sense of purpose I hadn't felt in months. The confrontation with Grayson and Lydia had ignited a fire in me, and I was determined to see this through. I dressed quickly and headed to Montgomery Construction, ready to dive into my new role and start gathering the evidence I needed. As I walked into the office, Rose met me with a concerned smile. How are you holding up, sweetheart? I'm okay, mom, I assured her. Actually, I'm better than okay. I'm ready to fight back. She squeezed my arm. That's my girl. Come on, there's something I need to show you. We headed to her office, where she pulled out a thick file. I've been doing some digging, she said, her voice low. Grayson's been up to more than just having an affair. I leaned forward, my heart racing. What do you mean? Rose spread out several documents on her desk. Look at these. Financial reports, bank statements, emails. Grayson's been siphoning money from your joint accounts for months. I scanned the papers, my blood boiling as I saw the evidence in black and white. Thousands of dollars transferred to an account I didn't recognize. Is this for Maya? I asked my voice tight. Rose shook her head. I don't think so. Look at the account name. I squinted at the fine print. Hartman Enterprises? I've never heard of it. That's because it doesn't exist, Rose said grimly. At least, not officially. It's a shell company, Evelyn. Grayson's been funneling money through it, probably to hide it from you during the divorce. The realization hit me like a punch to the gut. Not only had Grayson betrayed me emotionally, but he'd also been planning to leave me financially destitute. That bastard, I whispered my hands shaking with rage. Rose placed a comforting hand on my shoulder. I know it's hard, honey, but we can use this. With this evidence, we can nail him to the wall in the divorce proceedings. I nodded, my mind racing. We need more, though. If he's been doing this with our personal accounts, what's he been doing with the company? For the next few hours, Rose and I pored over financial records, cross-referencing dates and transactions. It was tedious work, but with each discovery, my resolve strengthened. By mid-afternoon, we had uncovered a disturbing pattern. Grayson had been manipulating contracts, inflating costs, and skimming off the top. He'd been careful, never taking enough to raise immediate suspicion, but over time, 
It added up to a significant amount. He's been stealing from the company, I said, my voice hollow. From my family, Rose's face was a mask of controlled anger. We've got him, Evelyn, but we need to be smart about how we use this information. Just then, there was a knock at the door. Oliver poked his head in, his expression grim. Evelyn, there's someone here to see you. I exchanged a worried glance with Rose before following my father out. To my surprise, standing in the reception area was Maya Reynolds. She looked as polished and beautiful as ever, but there was a vulnerability in her eyes that I'd never seen before. Evelyn, she said, her voice trembling slightly. I, I think we need to talk. I led her to a private conference room, my mind whirling. What could Grayson's mistress possibly want with me? Once we were seated, Maya took a deep breath. I'm so sorry, she blurted out. I didn't know. I swear, I had no idea you and Grayson were still together. I felt a flicker of pity for her, despite everything. He lied to you too, didn't he? She nodded, tears welling in her eyes. He told me you two had separated months ago, that he was just waiting for the right time to file for divorce. I believed him. God, I was so stupid. I handed her a tissue, my own emotions a confusing mix of anger and empathy. You're not stupid, Maya. Grayson's very good at what he does. Maya composed herself, then reached into her purse. I found something. After you sent those documents to my place, I started looking closer at some things Grayson had left at my apartment. She pulled out a USB drive. There are emails on here. Plans. He, he was going to use me to get to my father's company, just like he used to for Montgomery Construction. I took the drive, my hand shaking slightly. Thank you, Maya. This, this could change everything. As Maya left, I felt a strange sense of camaraderie with her. We'd both been pawns in Grayson's game, but now, we were taking back control. I rushed back to Rose's office, brandishing the USB drive. Mom, we've got more evidence. It's time to take this to the next level. Rose's eyes gleamed with determination. What do you have in mind? I smiled, a plan already forming. I think it's time we set a trap for Grayson, and I know just how to do it. As we began to strategize, I felt a surge of confidence. Grayson had underestimated me, thinking I was just a naive, compliant wife. He was about to learn just how wrong he was. The game was changing, and this time I was going to be the one calling the shots. The next week passed in a blur of meticulous planning and carefully orchestrated deception. By day, I threw myself into work at Montgomery Construction, learning the ins and outs of the business I'd ignored for too long. By night, I plotted Grayson's downfall with a determination that surprised even me. Are you sure about this, Evelyn? My father asked one evening as we pored over the final details of our plan. There's no going back once we set this in motion. I met his gaze, my resolve unwavering. I'm sure, Dad. Grayson needs to pay for what he's done. To me, to our family, to the company. Rose squeezed my hand. We're with you, sweetheart. Every step of the way. As the day of Grayson's business trip approached, I felt a strange mix of anticipation and dread. I had to play my part perfectly, maintain the facade of the loving, unsuspecting wife right up until the moment I pulled the rug out from under him. The morning of his departure, I woke early to make Grayson's favorite breakfast. As I stood at the stove, flipping pancakes, I felt his arms snake around my waist. Mmm, something smells good, he murmured, nuzzling my neck. I forced a smile, turning to face him. I wanted to send you off right. Big presentation today, isn't it? Grayson nodded, his eyes gleaming with excitement that I now recognized as greed. Could be a game changer for the company. For us. If only he knew how right he was. We ate breakfast in companionable silence, Grayson occasionally checking his phone and muttering about last-minute details. I watched him, marveling at how easily the lies fell from his lips. As he prepared to leave, I handed him his briefcase. I packed you a little surprise, I said, gesturing to the front pocket. Don't open it until you're on the plane. Grayson's face softened, and for a moment, I saw a flicker of the man I'd fallen in love with. You're too good to me, Evelyn. I swallowed hard, 
pushing down the lump in my throat. Have a safe flight. I love you. He kissed me goodbye, and as the door closed behind him, I let out a shaky breath. The surprise I'd packed was a USB drive containing all the evidence of his embezzlement and infidelity. By the time he landed, his world would be crumbling around him. I waited until I was sure Grayson had left before springing into action. I called Rose, my voice steady. It's done. He's gone. Time for phase two. Within an hour, a team from Montgomery Construction arrived at the house. Under the guise of some routine maintenance work I'd scheduled weeks ago, they began the process of documenting every inch of the property. As I watched them work, cataloging our possessions and taking meticulous notes, I felt a strange sense of detachment. This house, once my dream home, now felt like nothing more than an elaborate stage set for Grayson's deceptions. Midway through the day, my phone buzzed with a text from Grayson. Just boarded. Thanks for the surprise, babe. You always know how to make me smile. I stared at the message, my fingers hovering over the keyboard. Part of me wanted to warn him, to give him one last chance to come clean. But I thought of all the lies, all the betrayals, and my resolve hardened. Glad you like it, I typed back. Have a great trip. Can't wait to hear all about it when you get back. As I hit send, I felt a weight lift from my shoulders. There was no going back now. The rest of the day passed in a flurry of activity. I met with our lawyer, finalizing the divorce papers and ensuring everything was in order for the legal battle I knew was coming. I transferred the last of my personal belongings to my parents' house, leaving behind only what was necessary to maintain the illusion that nothing had changed. As evening fell, I stood in the empty living room, memories washing over me. Our first night in the house, the parties we'd hosted, the quiet evenings curled up on the couch. All of it tainted now by the knowledge of Grayson's true nature. My phone buzzed again, a message from Rose. It's done. Everything's in place. Are you ready for tomorrow? I took a deep breath, looking around the room one last time. I'm ready. I typed back. Tomorrow, Grayson would return to find his life in shambles. The house he'd used to impress his colleagues and mistresses would be gone. His reputation, both personal and professional, would be in tatters. And I would be waiting, ready to show him exactly who he'd underestimated. As I locked the front door for the last time, I felt a surge of anticipation. The calm before the storm was over. Tomorrow, the real battle would begin. And I was ready for war. The morning dawned crisp and clear, a stark contrast to the storm brewing inside me. I stood at the edge of our property, watching as the Montgomery construction crew arrived. Heavy machinery rumbled up the driveway, a fleet of trucks following close behind. This was it. The point of no return. Are you absolutely certain about this, Evelyn? My father asked, his voice low and concerned. I nodded, my eyes never leaving the house. I've never been more sure of anything in my life, Dad. With a deep breath, I gave the signal. The foreman nodded, and the air filled with the deafening roar of engines coming to life. I watched, heart pounding, as the first excavators claw bit into the side of the house. The crack of splintering wood and shattering glass was like music to my ears. As the demolition progressed, I felt a strange mix of emotions wash over me. Grief for the life I thought I'd had, anger at Grayson's betrayal, and an overwhelming sense of liberation. With each wall that fell, I felt the weight of lies and manipulation crumbling away. My phone buzzed in my pocket, a text from Rose. It's done. The evidence has been delivered to the authorities. There's no going back now. I typed back a quick reply. Good. Let it all burn. By midday, our dream home, the stage for Grayson's elaborate deceptions, was nothing more than a pile of rubble. I walked through the debris, picking up fragments of our life together. A shard of the vase we'd bought on our honeymoon, a twisted picture frame that once held a photo of us smiling on the beach. All of it meaningless now. As the crew began clearing the site, my phone rang. Grayson's name flashed on the screen. I took a deep breath, stealing myself, and answered. Evelyn. His voice was frantic. What the hell is going on? I just got a call from the police. They're saying something about embezzlement and fraud. 
And why isn't Maya answering her phone? I let out a cold laugh. Oh, Grayson, you really should have been more careful with your secrets. What are you talking about? He sputtered. Where are you? I'm coming home right now. Home, I said, my voice dripping with sarcasm. I'm afraid you'll find that a bit difficult. You see, our house seems to have had a little accident. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. When Grayson spoke again, his voice was low and dangerous. What have you done, Evelyn? I walked to the edge of the property, looking out over the empty lot where our house once stood. I've done exactly what you taught me to do, darling. I've taken control. I've seized an opportunity. I've used every resource at my disposal to get what I want. You stupid bitch, he hissed. You have no idea what you've done. When I get back. When you get back, you'll find divorce papers waiting for you. I interrupted. Along with a team of lawyers ready to bury you in litigation. Oh, and I wouldn't count on Maya for support. She's had quite the revelation about your true nature. I could hear Grayson's ragged breathing on the other end of the line. This isn't over, Evelyn. You think you've won, but you have no idea who you're dealing with. No, Grayson, I said, my voice steady and cold. You're the one who had no idea who he was dealing with. I'm not just some stepping stone. I'm Evelyn Montgomery, and I'm the woman who's going to bring your whole world crashing down. I ended the call, a sense of grim satisfaction settling over me. I knew this was just the beginning. Grayson wouldn't go down without a fight, and his parents, Lydia especially, would no doubt rally to his defense. But for the first time in years, I felt truly in control of my own destiny. As the sun began to set, casting long shadows over the empty lot, I felt a presence beside me. Rose put her arm around my shoulders, and we stood in silence, watching the last of the debris being cleared away. What now? She asked softly. I turned to her, a small smile playing on my lips. Now, we prepare for war. Grayson and the Hartmans are going to throw everything they have at us. We need to be ready. Rose nodded, her eyes gleaming with determination. We will be. The whole family is behind you, Evelyn. We'll face this together. As we walked away from the ruins of my old life, I felt a surge of strength and purpose. Grayson had underestimated me, seen me as nothing more than a pawn in his game. But he was about to learn that sometimes the pawn becomes the queen. And in this game, I was playing to win. The aftermath of the demolition was a whirlwind of activity. I barely had time to catch my breath before the next phase of my plan kicked into gear. With Grayson's belongings salvaged from the rubble, I set about the task of delivering them to Maya's doorstep, along with a carefully curated package of evidence detailing his deceit. My hands shook as I sealed the final envelope. Inside was a letter to Maya, explaining everything, Grayson's manipulation, his financial fraud, and his plans to use her family's connections for his own gain. I debated long and hard about whether to include the details of our own failing marriage, but in the end, I decided the truth was the kindest thing I could offer her. As I watched the courier drive away with the package, I felt a mix of anticipation and dread. There was no going back now. The next 24 hours were a blur of legal meetings and damage control at Montgomery Construction. We'd known there would be fallout from exposing Grayson's embezzlement, but the reality was more chaotic than we'd anticipated. Clients were calling, demanding explanations. The press was sniffing around, sensing a juicy scandal. Through it all, I kept my phone close, waiting for the inevitable. When it finally came, it wasn't a call from Grayson or his lawyers. It was Maya. Is it true? Her voice was barely above a whisper, raw with emotion. All of it. I closed my eyes, stealing myself. Yes, Maya. I'm so sorry. There was a long pause, filled only by the sound of her ragged breathing. When she spoke again, her voice was stronger, tinged with anger. He's here now, you know. Showed up at my door an hour ago, full of excuses and promises. I didn't let him in. A wave of relief washed over me. Good. Maya, I know this is a lot to take in, but... Thank you, she interrupted for telling me the truth, for, for not letting him do to me what he did to you. The call ended shortly after, 
leaving me with a bittersweet sense of closure. One more piece of Grayson's carefully constructed facade had crumbled away, but the real storm was yet to come. It hit with the force of a hurricane the next morning. I was in a meeting with our legal team when my father burst into the room, his face ashen. Evelyn, you need to see this. He handed me his tablet, open to a local news site. The headline made my blood run cold. Montgomery construction heir in bitter divorce battle. Accusations of fraud and destruction of property. The article was a masterpiece of spin, painting Grayson as the victim of a vengeful wife and a corrupt family business. It hinted at deeper scandals, suggesting that the demolition of our house was an attempt to destroy evidence of larger financial crimes. Lydia, I growled, recognizing the manipulative hand of my mother-in-law in every carefully crafted sentence. As if summoned by her name, my phone lit up with an incoming call. Lydia Hartman's number flashed on the screen. I answered, my voice cold. Hello, Lydia. Evelyn, darling. Her tone was saccharine, dripping with false concern. I just saw the most distressing news. Are you all right? This must be such a difficult time for you. I gritted my teeth, seeing through her act. Cut the crap, Lydia. We both know you're behind this hit piece. She laughed, a brittle sound. Oh, Evelyn, always so quick to accuse. I'm merely looking out for my son's interests. Surely you can understand that. What I understand, I said, my voice low and dangerous, is that you and Grayson have grossly underestimated me. This little media stunt? It's just the beginning of your problems. There was a pause, and when Lydia spoke again, the fake sweetness was gone from her voice. You have no idea what you're up against, you foolish girl. The Hartmans have connections you can't even imagine. We'll bury you and your little family business. I smiled, though she couldn't see it. Bring it on, Lydia. I'm not the naive girl you think I am. I've learned from the best. You and Grayson taught me well. I ended the call, my heart pounding. The room had fallen silent, all eyes on me. Well, my father said, breaking the tension. I think it's safe to say the gloves are off. I nodded, a grim determination settling over me. We knew this was coming. Time to put our contingency plans into action. For the rest of the day, we worked tirelessly, countering the Hartman's narrative with our own press releases, reaching out to loyal clients to reassure them, and preparing for the legal battle ahead. As night fell, I found myself standing at the window of my office, looking out over the city. Somewhere out there, Grayson and his family were plotting their next move. But for the first time since this all began, I felt truly ready for whatever they might throw at me. The old Evelyn, the one who had been content to play the role of trophy wife, who had ignored the red flags and swallowed the lies, was gone. In her place stood a woman forged in the fires of betrayal and determination. Grayson had wanted a war. Now he was going to get one. And I intended to win. The legal battle with Grayson and the Hartmans dragged on for months, a grueling war of attrition that tested every ounce of my resolve. But as the dust finally began to settle, I found myself standing on the other side, battered but unbroken. The final hearing was a blur of legal jargon and tense silences. I sat across from Grayson, studying the man I'd once loved. He looked older, the strain of the past months etched into the lines around his eyes. For a moment, I felt a flicker of pity, quickly extinguished by the memory of his betrayal. As the judge delivered her verdict, I held my breath. The words washed over me like a cleansing wave. In favor of the plaintiff, Evelyn Montgomery. It was over. We'd won. Outside the courthouse, surrounded by a sea of reporters, I felt my mother's hand slip into mine. Rose's voice was steady as she addressed the crowd. Montgomery Construction has always stood for integrity and hard work. Today's verdict reaffirms those values. We're grateful for the court's decision and look forward to moving past this difficult chapter. I met Grayson's eyes as he pushed through the crowd. For a moment, the mask slipped and I saw a flicker of the man I'd married, vulnerable, almost lost. But then Lydia appeared at his side, her face a storm of barely contained rage, and the moment passed. This isn't over, Lydia hissed as they brushed past us. I smiled, 
feeling a weight lift from my shoulders. Yes, Lydia, it is. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of activity. With the legal battle behind us, I threw myself into rebuilding, both the company and my life. We weathered the storm of bad press, emerging stronger and more united as a family and a business. On a crisp autumn morning, I stood in front of a modest craftsman-style house, keys in hand. It wasn't the sprawling mansion Grayson and I had shared, but as I walked through the rooms, I felt something I hadn't in years, a sense of home. As I unpacked, I came across a photo album I'd forgotten about. Inside were snapshots of my life with Grayson, our wedding, vacations, parties with friends. I traced my finger over our smiling faces, remembering the hope and love I'd felt back then. For the first time since everything had fallen apart, I allowed myself to cry. Not for the loss of Grayson or the life we'd had, but for the woman I'd been. Naive. Trusting. Willing to dim her own light to make someone else shine brighter. A knock at the door startled me from my reverie. I opened it to find Maya standing on my porch, looking nervous but determined. I hope I'm not intruding, she said softly. I just, I wanted to thank you and to apologize. I invited her in and over cups of tea, we talked, really talked for the first time, about Grayson, about the pain of betrayal and about the strength it takes to rebuild. As Maya was leaving, she turned to me, her eyes shining with unshed tears. You know, Evelyn, I used to be so jealous of you. I thought you had everything. But now I see that what you have, your strength, your family, your sense of self, those are the things that really matter. Her words stayed with me long after she'd gone, a reminder of how far I'd come. That night, I sat on my new porch, watching the sun set over the neighborhood. My phone buzzed with a text from Rose. Proud of you, sweetheart. Your father, and I can't wait to see the new place tomorrow. I smiled, feeling a surge of gratitude for my family's unwavering support. They had been my rock through all of this, reminding me of who I was when I'd lost sight of myself. As the stars began to appear in the darkening sky, I thought about the journey that had brought me here. The pain, the betrayal, the fight to reclaim my life, it had all led to this moment of quiet peace. I wasn't the same woman who had stood in that kitchen, shattered by Grayson's cruel words. I was stronger now, wiser, more aware of my own worth. I had faced my fears, stood up to manipulation and deceit, and come out the other side. The future stretched out before me, full of possibilities. There would be challenges, of course. The scars of what I'd been through wouldn't fade overnight. But for the first time in a long time, I felt truly excited about what lay ahead. I took a deep breath, savoring the crisp night air. Grayson had called me a stepping stone, but he'd been wrong. I wasn't a stepping stone in someone else's journey. I was the architect of my own path, the builder of my own dreams. As I stood to go inside, I paused for a moment, looking up at the stars. Thank you, I whispered, to no one and everyone at once. For the lessons, for the strength, for the chance to start anew. Tomorrow would bring new challenges, new opportunities to grow and learn. But tonight, in this moment of hard-won peace, I was exactly where I needed to be. I was home.